All right. So let's work on this problem. This is uh, 321 out of your book. Now, um, this kind of fits nicely with the method of sections that we talked about last time. I know it's been a while. Uh, we stopped to do the connects work. But there's only a, a handful of members uh, identified. So um, what I like to do first is just go ahead and mark them down. So FG, let's see, FG, that's this one. Uh, GD, that's this one. Uh, CD, that's this one. Well, that's nice. So that looks like we can do a, a section right through there. And then it also wants GA. Where's GA? That's this guy right here. So a, a, a strategy might be, um, I think an appropriate one would be to go ahead and find these three that you can cut using method of sections. And then we'd have to go down here and figure out what we want to do with GA. Um, you could do another method of sections if you like, um, which might be uh, the easiest thing to do. So just to get started, I'm going to go ahead and, and do this, this first part. So now I'm looking at this structure. There is an advantage about whether you want to do the top part of the structure or the bottom part. What do you think that advantage would be if you did the top part? Yeah, you don't need these reactions. Now, these reactions are doable. There's two here at the pin and one at the roller, so you could find those. I think a couple of your homework problems have had pins and pins, yes. which if you try to do a whole free body, you won't be able to find all four of them. And that, so that kind of slows you down. So I think, um, and this is what we'll do, is we'll work the top half of this particular one to find these uh, first three. And then we'll come back and deal with this. So let's let's let's. I'm going to redraw this thing over here to the side. See if I can do it. And then I'm going to identify those forces. So this will be the force in CD. Uh, this one will be the force in uh, GF. And this guy here will be the force in DG. And I'll go ahead and finish by applying the, uh, the known forces. So I have a force here at F. That's uh, four kilonewtons. And up here at the top, uh, that's connection E. And also I have another four kilonewton force. I think that's everything there is. I'll go ahead and identify that connection as D. So I'm going to plan my strategy now about how best to solve this. Um, I'm going to try to use as many moment equations as I can because those are pretty handy. So just looking at some of my forces, for example, this one D, G, C, D, well, you can see they both have D. So if I were to go to joint D here and some moments about D, well, both those forces are concurrent there. So I could write one equation summing moments about D in terms of one unknown, the force in GF. So that makes pretty good sense. Um, what else could I do? Well, this other set, uh, G, F, D, G, well, they, they share G. Now, even though G is not on my free body, I can easily locate point G. And if I sum moments about G, then again, G, F, and D, G, both are concurrent at G, so I should be able to find my force C, D. Uh, another point would be, and this is a little, a little more difficult to see, uh, not based on the subscripts, is if you look at GF on its line of action, it's vertical all the way through here, and then if you look at CD on its line of action all the way up through here, you do see that they are concurrent at E. So I could sum moments at E too. And that's, I think that's the strategy I'm going to take. Okay? Everybody see that? 
So I just we'll, just we'll just go ahead and go through it. So I'll start with the easiest one to see, which is D. So I'll sum moments about D. I'll use right hand rule for my sign convention, and then of course we'll make sure everything's in equilibrium. So looking at D, uh, DG and CD pass through D, so I don't have to worry about that. Also, this horizontal 4 kilonewton force at F also passes through D. So I'm just going to have one unknown, GF, and one known, this 4 kilonewton force at E to deal with. So if I'm looking at D, this 4 kilonewton force is creating what kind of moment about D? Positive or negative? Positive. So positive moment, and it has a force of 4 kilonewtons. And what is the distance from D to E? That's the height. I didn't write that on there, but it's 2 meters. So there's the moment caused by the 4 kilonewton force at E. Positive moment. So the other moment about D is caused by this force GF. What, what kind of moment does that create, positive or negative? Also positive. So I'll say there's my positive moment. And the force is GF. And its moment arm is this distance. It's not given here, but if you look at the, um, the geometry, this is 3. So this would be 3. And this is halfway up, right? So it's going to be half the distance. So this should be how, how big? It should be 1.5. You guys see that? No? Because if you start off at 3 here and you end at 0, uh, this height is right in the middle, so it should be halfway, half between 3 and 0 is 1.5. So that means that that has a moment arm of 1.5. So I should be able to easily solve for the force in uh, GF. It looks like it's going to be negative, which means what? Is that tension or compression? Compression, because I always assume tension for my forces. So whatever 8 divided by 1.5 is, should be like 3? No, that's not right. 5. The other, I went the wrong way. What is it? 5 point what? 5.33? So 5.33 kilonewtons, and it's negative. So let's recall the strategy. So I said I start at D first, and then I also said, hey, I'll go to G. Okay, that's cool. I can do that. So I'm looking at G. Um, I'll have to consider two forces, the one at F and the one at E, and they're both going to create what kind of moment about G? Positive or negative? About G. Positive. Positive, yeah. So I'm going to sum moments about G. Make sure it's zero. So both these forces about G are going clock or counterclockwise. That's positive for my sign convention. So the first one will be 4 kilonewtons. The first moment arm is this distance, which is 2. And the second moment arm is 2 plus 2. So I'll just put those together. So there's the, a, a moment for two forces uh, at a moment arm of two and at a moment arm of four. So what I have to deal with now is uh, this force CD. So I'm going to suggest, and I'll go ahead and extend these lines so you can kind of visualize it and run you all the way down to C here. So um, this force, CD, I can position anywhere on this line of action that I like. So if I were to slide it up to E and then look at the two components, only one would create moment about G. But uh, I'm going to slide it down to C for the same reason. So when this force slides all the way down, there will be a horizontal component and a vertical component of CD at that point. Which one of those, horizontal or vertical, create moment about G? 
the vertical one. So I've got to just find the vertical component. Uh, so to do that, I'll go ahead and look at the geometry of that line. So looking at this line here, it looks like I have a run of three to a rise of four. Hey, it's a three, four, five triangle. How convenient. Right? So three to four, and we want the vertical part, so that would be the four, so it would be four fifths. And it's acting down. So how, what kind of moment is that about G, positive or negative? Negative. So it would be negative four-fifths of CD. That's the vertical component. And then the moment arm would be this distance, which is here, which is three. So I should be able to solve for the force in CD. And just looking at the signs, it looks like it's going to be positive. Uh, so that's 6. 6 times 4 is 24. Divided by 3 is 8. Times 5 is 40. Divided by 4 is 10. I think. What do you think it is? You guys have calculators. I don't. Did I do that right? Yep. 10? One, two down, one to go, right? Well, actually, four to, two to go, because we have four total. Now, since I have CD, and I have... Uh, uh, I said GH. That should be GF. Sorry, I messed that up. I have it GF here. So I have this one, and I have this one. I could just sum forces X or sum forces Y, but then I'd have to include my previous answers. So I'm going to not do that. I want to find another point. We talked about this previous too. I'm going to sum moments at E. Now if you were more comfortable going ahead and summon forces in the X and Y direction to get DG, do that. I prefer this technique because I don't have to worry about my previous answers. I can write one equation and one unknown. So I'm looking at E. You can see GF passes through E and also CD passes through E. So I'm just left with this guy and this four kip force. So handling the four kip force, this one passes through E, so I don't have to worry about that. This four kip at F, what kind of moment does it create about E when we use right hand rule? Positive or negative? Negative. So I'm going to have negative, and then the force is 4K, and the distance between E to F is 2. Now I've got this guy here, uh, and just to help you visualize this, it can really go anywhere it wants on this line of action. Okay? So I'm going to let it come all the way down to G. And when I do that, I'll get a horizontal component and I'll get a vertical component. Now since we're summing moments about E, which of these two components creates moment about E? The horizontal or the vertical? The horizontal, right? The vertical one passes right through E. So I just have to get the horizontal component of DG and then I'll be able to do the moment. So I just need this distance. I mean, sorry, this uh, geometry. So looking at this element right here, it looks like I have a run of 1.5 and a rise or a drop of 2. Well, that's another 3, 4, 5 triangle, right? If you, square, if you double those, you get 3 to 4. So 3 to 4. And I want the horizontal component, which would be here, so that's 3 fifths. So I, 3 fifths of DG will be right here. Now this creates what kind of moment about E? Positive or negative? negative? Negative. So I have three fifths of the force DG, that's this component right here, times that distance, which is four. So it looks like the force in DG 
is going to be negative and equal to 3.33, I think. You guys get 3.33? Okay? So I think this is a doable problem for the exam. I'm looking at the timer now. We've been doing this for about 15 minutes. And that's with a lot of talking and discussing and talking about strategy. So I think this is a reasonable type of problem to be prepared for on the exam. Maybe the next question would not be because, or this additional part, because I now want to have GA, which is here. How, how should I get that? Um, could I go to uh, do a joint at G? Yeah, because I have these two values, and I don't have the horizontal, but this is all vertical. So if I just summed forces in the y direction at g, I would be okay. I could do that. So I think I will to make that. So I'll come back now and say if I did go and look at a joint, in this case g, let's draw and see what I've got. So here's g. And uh, I've got a force to the right. That would be the force uh, CG. I've got a force down. That would be the force uh, AG. That's the one I'm looking for. Uh, one up. That's the force uh, GF. And then this guy to the right at an angle. That's the force DG. So let's just make sure that everybody sees this. I know GF, so this thing I know. I know DG, this thing I know. And this is really the only one I'm looking for. So I don't really have to be concerned about this horizontal force right now. Oh, thank you very much. That would have not... Well, interestingly enough, it wouldn't make any difference, but let's make sure we're complete. Yeah. So now to get this guy, I'm just going to sum forces in the, the y direction. So assuming up is positive, I'll sum forces in the y direction, make sure we're in equilibrium. So uh, let's find the y components. Let's recall that we know that the slope of this is a rise of 4 to a run of 3. So Starting here at the top, I've got GF acting up. I've got DG also acting up, but I only want the, the vertical component, which is 4. So that'll be plus uh, 4 fifths DG. And then I've got the thing I'm looking for acting down, the force in AG. So let's solve for AG. What do we get? Well, I'll have to put my GF in there. That's negative. And I have to put my DG in there. That's also negative. So it looks like I'm going to get a negative answer. I just don't know what those things are off the top of my head. You guys have to help me out. Let's see. GF is minus 5.33. And then 4 fifths of DG. I don't know what that is. What do you get? 7.99, that sounds like 8 to me. Anybody else get that? Anybody else get it? Yep. No? Anybody care? Anybody there? Hello? Yeah, oh, you're there. Good, 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 good. 8. You guys are the quietest class I think I've ever had since I've started teaching this course. I started teaching this in the fall of 1993, so congratulations. All right, any other questions about this? I think not, since you don't speak, so...